Hi, today we're going to talk holiday reading. So, most people hate packing. They will leave it until the last moment, but I will genuinely get my suitcase out about, you know, two weeks before I'm planned to go on holiday. I'm going to Greece quite soon, so my suitcase is ready, and now it's time to get to my favourite bit, which is picking which books I get to bring on my trip. Usually I do a lot of, like, two, three day trips, which means that I just bring a backpack, which leaves me with enough space for one, maybe two books. But since this is a slightly longer trip, I get to bring a suitcase, which means you know, 50% clothes, 50% books. Especially because this trip to Greece will have lots of downtime, lots of time for reading in the sun. So I wanted to chat a little bit about my selection process and just like reading on holiday, what kind of books you want to bring, etc. And then I'm going to show you the actual books that I'm planning to bring on this trip. I absolutely love watching what's in my bag videos and I feel like this is potentially the bookish equivalent of this. All right, so how do I select the books that I want to bring on holiday? For me, I have to make sure that these are books that have no obligation related to them. So no books that I need to read for work, no books that have specific deadlines to them, no books that I feel like I have to read, because otherwise I just won't. I like books that will take me a little while to read. I usually don't bring graphic novels because they have a very small number of reading hours attached to them and it means I just have to bring a ton of books. I like bringing fantasy and dystopian novels, like getting totally wrapped up in a different world is something really good to do on holiday, I think. And I also like bringing books that I wouldn't really mind leaving behind on holiday. So maybe proof copies or books that I probably won't be that attached to because it means I can leave some of the books and then bring back some souvenirs. Also, I know that there are, you know, typical beach reads and I sometimes tend to bring quite like sad and intense books on holiday as well. This wasn't on holiday, but one time I finished reading Looking for Alaska at the beach. I don't know if that was the best idea. It was basically just like trying to not sob openly on the beach. And I think for me, maybe the most important part as well is that they are books that flow really easily. Books that I think will be quite quick reads, even though they might be really big, just things that I can really just like bite into and, you know, finish in a day. I know a lot of people bring e-readers on holiday as well because it will give them an unlimited number of books to read, but I do love having a physical book to have there next to my towel or stuffed into my backpack. And I feel like you you go on a journey with that physical book and it'll, it'll have been with you on the trip. Oh yeah, and then finally, I usually don't bring any hardbacks or any books that I know I want to keep pristine, so they have to be books that can be knocked around a little bit. Alright, so those are my rules, or just kind of my general ideas behind books that I bring on holiday. I haven't been on a sort of long, relaxing type holiday where there's lots of time for reading in quite a while, so I feel like I'm sort of starting from scratch. Number one is Who Runs the World by Virginia Bergen or Bergen. This is a proof copy, so that is good. It is YA, which is usually quite good for like finishing in a day, but it does say that it is a gripping page turner, which is great. I've talked about this before in a haul, but it is a sort of feminist YA book set in a world without men, which might make for some good reading during an all-girls trip to Greece. Next up, there is a book that I talked about in my 2017 to read list, and it is To Hold the Bridge by Garth Nix. It falls into the fantasy realm. It is a short story bundle and whenever I read Garth and Nick's books I just really like get into them and just can't stop reading. So this will probably be one of the first ones that I dig into. Also I know that Rosianna has already read it and she'll be on the trip as well so we'll have something to discuss. Then we've got some sci-fi as well. I've mentioned this book mega recently but I'm really excited to read it so I wanted to bring it along and also Lots of you in the comments were saying that you absolutely loved this book, so good recommendations. Octavia E. Butler's Kindred. It is set in 19th century Maryland. I do think that this is going to be quite a heavy one to read, so it is not your typical beach read, but I can just see myself sitting down and reading this in one go. Next up, this is the chunkiest one I'll be bringing along. This is a proof copy, and again, lots of the girls that I'm going on holiday with have already read this, so it'll be a nice discussion topic. It's a modern version of Pride and Prejudice. It's called Eligible, and I think I will really, really enjoy reading this on holiday. It is really big, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Also, this is gonna be so satisfying to go through. And then finally, before you start thinking, how many books are you bringing on this holiday? I am also bringing Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. 
some non-fiction. Always good. Again, I think this will make for a great discussion topic on holiday. Hopefully I'll be able to dip in and out of this collection of essays, sort of depending on what I'm feeling like. Alright, so those are the books that I'm taking on holiday to Greece. I hope you enjoyed my selection. I've just realized that almost all the spines are black. It doesn't really look like a holiday reading list, but I think this will keep me entertained for quite a while. I would love to hear what your rules are when it comes to picking holiday reads. What kind of things do you like to bring on holiday and what sort of books are absolutely not allowed. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later. Doei!